All right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle. Uh, not with us tonight is Matt. Apparently, he's dealing with a flying ant situation is what he texted me. So, Aaron, I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on down in Orlando. Oh, We're here is. in Jacksonville, zero flying ants. Yeah. Um, tonight, I'm with Coach Aaron Avery, who's the offensive coordinator at the Bowl School here in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, Coach, welcome back to the show. We appreciate having you on. Yeah, absolutely. Got sound effects this time. Getting we fancy. do this time around. We have we have come a long way since the last time you were on. Uh, so real quick before we get into tonight's topic, if you are listening, please smash that like button and subscribe. Again, the more you subscribe, the more we're able to get guests on and do these videos. So we really appreciate it if you do that. And additionally, if you're interested in some more content from the Board Drill Podcast, go ahead and join our sub stack. Uh, if you go to Substack, uh, the Board Drill Podcast, uh, we do a lot of written content. We release articles every Thursday. Um, so on Wednesdays, we do podcasts. On Thursdays, we do articles, and we're going to try to continue to do that throughout the year. All right, Coach Avery, let's get into it. Uh, we got you on tonight. We're going to talk about summer and then into fall camp install. Uh, you and I are very close. Uh, we've talked about this numerous times. You do it in kind of an intricate way, and I'm not saying it's groundbreaking or anything, but it is different than a lot of coaches I talk to. So why don't you go ahead and take it from here and we'll talk about maybe start with summer and then we'll roll into the fall camp and, and talk about how you install. All right. So I'll, I'll give kind of a, a general overview and then I'll jump into a, a spreadsheet. I kind of put together to diagram it. So perfect. We get spring football here in Florida. And so for us, you know, we spend all that time kind of making sure we get all of the base things ran base things installed. Uh, but we installed a much slower pace. We're trying to make sure that, you know, all of our young kids um, have a good feel for it all. And so in spring, we install slowly so that way all the young kids can can know what they're doing. They feel comfortable with it. Then kind of as we get into summer, we start to speed things up. But we, we've got it set up in a way where we can hit everything. We hit everything multiple times. And then we hit everything <laughs> uh, leading back up into fall camp. And so what we do is... Um, I break kind of our core install uh, into weeks. And so we spend the first three weeks of summer installing basically like every core thing we could do in our offense. Uh, we spend the fourth week of summer on special stuff. Um, you know, it might be just special situational throw game. It might be funky formations. Um, you know, we're going to spend it on on something just a little off offbeat for us. And then the fifth week for us is usually that off week, you know, 4th of July, or, you know, the week 4th of July falls on, we, we always take that off. Then from there, what we do is we typically have three weeks left before fall camp. So we then reverse the install. So we go weeks one, two, three, four, we're off. Then we do that week three install, that week two install, that week one install, and then we're right into fall camp. And so that way, you know, like, like, most everybody, your day one install is is who you think you are as an offense. And so we hit our day one install the first week of summer, the last week of summer, and the first day of fall camp. And so that way, you know, all of our all of our freshmen that we get over the summer, they, that you know, some of our eighth graders are allowed to, allowed to participate in uh, spring football for us. So that's awesome. But some of them aren't, and so we're able to get those guys taught that install in june taught that install again in july and then taught that install um right as we start fall camp uh so what i'll do is i will show so real quick uh just if you're listening matt also hopped yeah, on so matt did we get our flying ant situation taken care of it's a wild He's situation mute, buddy <laughs> <laughs> perfect so uh Matt, to catch you up, we're talking with Coach Avery here. Um, he's talking about his install, how they install through five weeks, correct, Coach Avery? And then you install it backwards through five weeks and then into camp, correct? Is that kind of the so gist we go, of it? Uh, close. So we kind of go like the man install. So I got my I screenshot here. So weeks one, two, and three for us, you know, for all intents and purposes, like those are our first three, four days of install. Like everything core that we could kind of do. Um then the fourth week of install for us would be, you know, something something offbeat. And so I kind of filled this in with just generic things um, as an example here. So week four might be, you know, compressed bunches, red zone throw game, third down throw game, 
uh, getting in stacks, you know, running man beating type stuff, uh, so on and so forth. But then it would be weeks one, two, and three, all base things. However, you break it down. I know most most guys offensively they are following that kind of three, four, five day install. Uh, and yeah. So even if we were a five day install uh, squad, I'd still consolidate it down into those first three weeks. Um, that way, again, like we're hitting it multiple times. And so you can kind of see on the spreadsheet that first week, we're going to hit everything base. We're going to have our base personnel groupings, our core formations, our core run, uh, core, you know, protections are going to get taught, um, core concepts, all that's going to get taught. And, you know, leading right into week two, week three, week four, we're special stuff. Then week five, we're off, you know, go get away from football, kids, coaches, we're, we're completely off. Then week six for us, we'll repeat that week three install. The only things that we might start doing now is uh, you'll start to see those concepts <laughs> tagged, you know, differently. Uh, you'll start to see a lot more shifts and motions getting added. Um, but for the most part, you know, it's it's staying very, very, very similar to that week three install, just trying to spice it up and then doing it the same thing. So week seven, again, it's going to mirror that week two install. The only thing you'll start seeing is, you know, different formation tags. We might spend a little bit more time in empty. Uh, we'll add motions. We'll add shifts to it. Uh, we'll add, you know, if we have a special tag off, say counter, we'll start working it heavier that week. Then week eight, um, typically, you know, week eight, we cut short. That's week four fall camp. And so we'll hit our, our week one install there again, just like the following three weeks. We're going to add shifts. We're going to add motions. We're going to start moving guys around to hit it all. And so now summer is over. We have hit our, we have installed our offense, our core offense. We've now installed twice. We have spent an entire week on special stuff. So we've been spent an entire week on, you know, red zone throw game, third down throw game, uh, compressed formations, bunches, clusters, uh, funky formations. Um, and so now over summer, we've hit all that. And then leading right into day one, the thing that's fresh on top of, of our players' minds is that, you know, day one install. And so we get the day one install, we're hitting it there. Now going into that first week, you know, we'll, we'll break that install back out. And so again, if we were like a five day install team, I might make week one install most day one part of day two, so on and so forth. But then when we get to the kind of that, those fall practices, we'll shift back to whatever our default install would be. So just kind yeah. of as an example on this spreadsheet, I, I just put it down in under three days. Um, we are not really a, a three-day install operation because uh, we, we do quite a bit. Um, and so, you know, just break it back up and however you do, whether that be three, four, five days. And so now, again, through spring, everything got installed once. June everything got installed once July, everything got installed again. And then now that first week of fall camp, everything got installed again. And so in a very short amount of time, your core offense now has been taught multiple times uh, and hopefully kind of multiple different ways. You know, obviously most, most coaches were coming from a, you know, teaching background. And so for us now, Hey, maybe, maybe one of those installs, it's heavier in terms of the visuals in a meeting room, maybe one install, it's, it's exclusively on the field, you know, in spring, it's, a, it's obviously a combination of both and fall camp, it's a combination of both, um, but finding different ways to kind of install things, find out what's best for your kids. And so they're getting taught everything multiple times, a variety of different ways. And so now hopefully as you go into that second week of, you know, fall camp, you're able to, to really start hitting, um, you know, any special variations that you've got starting to add a lot more shifts, motions to spice things up, dress things up, you know, whatever you got to start getting, getting done to get, get ready for week one. Yeah. So talk a little bit about how, because you're doing this, you're, I mean, I assume you're able to really hit the ground running in the first couple of weeks of fall, maybe more so than some other teams that are still like, all right, here's our base thing. And here's what we're doing. Because you've already installed it so many times, really, I mean, the first week should almost be a breeze on offense, correct? Yeah, I mean, it, it's nice for us there because now, you know, we will marry up our 
And Summer, our offensive install, is not necessarily married up to the defense. Um, yeah. There are some situations where it's like, hey, we're installing this, we're installing that, you know, both sides. We're communicating about kind of what our focus is, but I wouldn't say we're, you know, we're, we're as reliant on each other there. Whereas you get into fall camp, there's a lot more communication about what both sides of the ball is installing. Um, and so it'll let us kind of show things where like, yeah, we're hitting the ground running pretty quickly there. But now, you know, we can show things against various looks. We've got a little bit more control in terms of the looks that we're going to see. It's not, hey, we're installing mesh this week, but we're exclusively seeing zone. Like, <laughs> good luck, guys. Figure it out. Yeah. Um, you know, and so you can marry it up. And so you can kind of play with now the, the presentations that we're seeing from the defense uh, a little bit more in fall camp. No, that makes a whole lot of sense. And, uh, you know, you're able to get such in, in, in such a small amount of time. And, and really, since I've been around, coach with a handful of guys, and, you know, I think that you're able to install more in a shorter period of time than a lot of coaches I've seen. I like the idea of what you're saying of, hey, we install it four times, but we also install it with four different presentations, right? We've all been teachers. We've all heard that commentary, right? Differentiation. You know, that's like that that hot word. By the way, if you're ever interviewing for a teaching job, make sure to say it in front of a principal. Differentiation and scaffolding and all these hot words. But really, as coaches, we utilize that maybe more in teachers on a daily basis. We have so many different kids with very different learning styles um, that we have to do that, right? We have to show it on film. We have to go out. And we have to walk through it. We have to run through it. We have to rep it, rep it, rep it so many times. And I think that makes a really good point. Talk about a little more about fall camp when you're working with the defense about how you marry these things up, is that a constant communication as far as like, Hey, I want to go here. I want to go there. Are you having to pull back some because of the defense, are you having to go forward quicker because of the defense, is there anything that kind of happens Any clashing going on there? Um, not typically. I mean, typically, you know, we're, we're, we're really on the same page with all that stuff. Uh, like they'll give us a heads up, like, Hey, pressure's coming today. You know what I mean? Um, so anytime, anytime that they think that we are going to see something that we definitely have to be ready for, they'll give us a heads up. Anytime that, hey, you guys are going to get, you know, this motion today. Um, hey, you guys are getting empty today. Hey, you guys yeah. are getting, you're getting bunched today. You know, trying to give them a heads up in terms of of that stuff where you know, like, hey, they've got to, they've got to teach special to some of those things, or we've got to yeah. teach special to some of those things. We we'll, we always give each other heads up, um, but in terms of, of like the core stuff, it's always married up really well. Our you know our defense coaches do a really good job, um, and so for us, you know, it's it's really easy. It's it's just whenever we have something off beat going in that yeah. they know they've got to spend time on, you know, it's making sure we give them a heads up, which you know we always try to do. Yeah. So real quick question. This is kind of a little bit off the beaten path here, but what day do you install goal line? Um, for, uh, the first day of full pads. It's, it's day four, right? Isn't that a rule? That's a, that's a golden rule of football. Yeah. Um, if you don't, I, I don't know, know. We're, we're cracking a little bit of a joke here. Um, yeah. but we, uh, I'll tell the story cause it's funny. Um, we worked for a head coach uh, a couple years back and, we sit down, it's me, I'm the DC, Aaron's the OC. We have the D-line coach in there and our head coach, and we're going through install, and we lay out like a really solid, right? It was like 13-day install through fall camp, right, Aaron? Um, Maybe it was less. It was pretty, I mean, it was yeah. it was at least 10 days. I think I think it was something like, yeah, I think it was the first two weeks, maybe. Yeah, okay, uh, so we'll call I it 10 find, days. I probably have it somewhere. Yeah, And we have goal line set. You and I, I still have the original sheet. If I can go look at it. we have goal line set on like day eight or something like that. Cause we didn't want to hit it till a certain point. And we go out there, we go through the first three days and then we're about to get in pads. And we're like, we print out the schedules and the head coach looks at us both like three minutes before we walk on the field. He's like, guys, it's goal line today. And we're like, what do you mean? It's goal line. We're, we we have the whole install. We sat down together and went through 10 days of it. He's like, no, guys, it's, it's, it, you should know that. It's always a goal line the first day of pass. And he walks out on the field, and me and Aaron are just sitting there stunned, staring at each other because we have five minutes to rework an entire practice sitting in my classroom. We were not yeah. happy for that. <laughs> no, but I, I we, we made it work because we started off practice like that. It, we, we, made, we made it work. 
We did. It's it, it'll always just be a fun joke. Um, so let's get back to install real quick. You talked about that week four or whatever it was, kind of your I'll call it exotic stuff. You know, I know mm-hmm. not all of it's exotic, but for the sake of an argument, exotic stuff. When do you come back to that in camp? Is my first question. And then as you're proceeding through camp, you know, fall camp isn't as long as we feel like it is. You know, sometimes it feels really long and sometimes it's not. When do you start game planning within that for your first opponent as well? So the first part of that, so our, the special stuff, that's where I would say we definitely start communicating more with, with the defense. Um, And so it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to start installing red zone throw game. If they're, they're not ready or they don't want to install red zone coverage. Um, And so I would say those kind of things are fluid. Uh, And then the other thing too, is kind of with what I was doing that is sometimes we find things during that week that we're like, Hey, look, that fits us maybe better than we thought that might become a little bit more core piece of what we do. And so when we get back around, uh, it, it kind of gets moved up. Um, and so that's that's really how we handle that. Um, what was the second part of the question? When do you kind of do that transition between game planning for your first opponent? Gotcha. You know, yeah, I know yeah. it's only a KOC, you know, so it's not quite as important. You know, or do you transition and say, we have a huge week one. We also need to work on that too. Like, is there any advanced work? And when you do that, like, when does it happen in fall camp? I would say, you know, that, that for us, it's probably always dependent on the opponent. You know, um, the big thing for us is transitioning into a typical game week, like practice setup. Yeah. You know, and so for the kickoff classic, even if we're not necessarily game planning them, um or doing anything special that week it is starting to get used to like hey look these are this is a, a game week monday practice force this is a game week tuesday practice force this is a game week thursday practice force here's yeah. what thursday should look like uh and so we're we're definitely much bigger into that um you know and then again like i said it depends on depends on the opponent it's not like we don't you know do any any film or anything like that um you know it's probably just you got to self-reflect at that point and say, like, look, at this point, are we better off spending time on us? Are we better off spending time on them? Kind of where where are we collectively as a as an offense, defense team? Um, but I would say for us, it's much more imperative that we just get into a game week routine than anything. Yeah, I mean, because you I mean, look, I, I just pulled up your schedule as we were talking. It's not like you come out the gate and you play a bunch of slappies, right? You got Reigns and Trinity right off the bat, correct? Yeah, two really, really, really good teams. Yeah, <laughs> and we play Creekside. We play Creekside in the kickoff classic. Uh, they're good. Okay. They're extremely well coached. You <laughs> and know, then you and, so, no. and then St. Augustine week three, who just went to a state yep. championship as well. So your your first four weeks are super fun. They're unbelievably coach. well coached as well. And, yeah, and super talented. Um, yeah, we've I mean so, yeah. two of those four coaches we've had on the show, uh, Coach McIntyre yeah. and Coach Braddock. We we yep. love them both. They're the so they're good game planners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Matt, I mean, you're an offensive guy, like what questions do you have as far as install? You know, I know the way, you know, I've, I've been able to be around you both and watch you both install. You guys do it slightly differently. You know, what are, what are kind of your thoughts on, on the way coach Avery does it and, and how that works against well, it, I think how you, you just it. opened my eyes to something, you know, the way he kind of oscillates <laughs> and, and goes backwards in July um, I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking in my head, you know, you, you usually lose the kids for that 4th of July break and they're going to come back and now you can go back and start with what you were exactly working on, refresh it, work it backwards. And then when you get to the end, you're flipping it again. I absolutely love that concept. I, I never thought of doing such a yeah. thing as that. We really didn't do as much summer install um, as I ever would have liked. I mean, we spent a lot of time in the weight room. And then on the field doing speed and agility work. Um, and we never wanted to keep the players too long. Um, I just think that it helps tremendously that at least a week to two weeks before fall camp, you're starting to run through those plays and you're starting to get this, the, the players, especially yeah. offensively. Cause as coach said, you know, it's not always about your opponent, you know, going into, into the season, you got to make sure you're executing properly on offense and that your, your players are in the right place doing the right thing. Um, and a lot of it's mental, you know, making sure that they're in the right spot and, and they have that understanding for, for their role in the offense. You know, the physical is going to be what it's going to be a lot of times on offense and, and you can teach it and coach it and make them better as the season goes on. 
but you know, as, as GI Joe used to say, knowledge is half the battle and, and you, you got to make sure the kids are in the right spot doing the right thing. Right. <laughs> so that's, that, that, that's the main thing with the install to me is to make sure you're not throwing too much at them. You're doing it in a logical order that makes sense. And, and you got to do it with the position coaches in mind, right? I don't want to throw stuff on my offensive line coach where he's coaching, hey, we're going to run trap and inside zone and outside zone and buck sweep on the same day. <laughs> you know, we're going to do all these different things. I yeah. want them to be able to work on down blocks and pulls or we're working zone or, you know, give those offensive line coaches and those guys something to focus on each day and get better at each day. Um, and I think a lot of young offensive coordinators try to want to are more worried about the plays than the actual process and um, what you're installing and how it's installed. Right. And, and how it's, uh, you gotta, you gotta yeah. set your coaches up for success, just like you try to set your players up for success. Yeah. And I know after I heard coach Avery, we, Obviously, everyone on the podcast, if you listen any kind of intently, you know that me and Coach Avery used to carpool to work every day. So we we literally would spend 45 minutes a day talking about this. I changed the way I install because of him talking about them. Like, man, that's not a bad idea. And I started doing it defensively. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's empirical evidence, but I felt my kids knew it better. I don't know if I can ever prove that. Uh, but, you you know, if you feel like they know it better and they feel like they know it better, like, screw it. Who cares if we're wrong? Uh, I'll go with it every time. Um, what I never incorporated though in Coach Avery was the exotics in the middle. Defensively, I wonder if, if that's something I can do with the sub packages and everything, right? Are, are you, I know you guys don't have as many sub packages, right? On offense, you just have standard packages, three or four or five or anything. I'm, I'm trying to think in my mind of incorporating those sub packages on defense and it gets some of those kids involved that may not get it. That's a week that they get a lot of reps. You know, what if he's the, the, dime corner that doesn't get a whole lot of reps during a regular week and now all of a sudden he has a whole week where he's getting nothing but reps that may keep that kid locked in over the summer so that's a that's a really good point do you see anything like that along yours because it looks like you're so uh the only thing i'll say that i i, I feel like i've heard a lot of just really high-end coaches talking about um is we we traditionally and we don't you know we, we traditionally don't really have anybody that plays both ways um, yeah. And so I, I've seen a lot of, of coaches talk about how they they try to find either a week or a, a segment of summer where that's like, hey, that's our two way week. You know, if you've got Travis uh -huh. Hunter playing DB for you, hey, like, look, look, you know, weeks one through three and, and six through eight, he's a DB. But week four, he is just a receiver. You know what that's I mean? And, and you. And you could do something like that. I think that'd be something uh, interesting, an interesting way to do it. The other, the other nice thing about flipping it is, you know, in that in June, like you're, you, you've always got kids going to camps, right? And so you, you know, it feels like someone's always somewhere camping, which, which you know, it's awesome. That's what they need yeah. to do. Um, and so at least by installing it twice, you're making the odds of that that one guy missing both installs it's it's slow you know or it's sorry it's minimal uh, if you only install things once in summer and that kid's not there that week or that day all of a sudden like hey you yeah. know you you missed you missed outside zone day you know or you missed outside zone week and then now they're not hitting it in you know until the first week of camp and so you can kind of hit things multiple times and then again you know we're, we're kind of the same way matt like we don't we don't keep them out there too long like we try to maximize our time with them so our I, when I when I say we install this, we install this again over the course of like a couple of days, and then it's a very, you know, it might be 15 minutes in a meeting room here, it might be um, 10 minutes of position group here, it might be 10 minutes of you know quarterbacks, running backs, tight ends, receivers here, it might be me sending them a playlist on huddle, right? And so it's a, a very informal. Um, you know, kind of way we install it over summer. Um, that way, you know, we're not 30 minute meetings every day. You know, we're not out on the field for four hours, just, just trying to get through a, a practice style. We're able to kind of teach it in, in spurts, uh, teach in position groups, kind of teach things on the fly. Some of it, we teach it while we're running it. Like, Hey, we're running this in, you know, we're running this in seven on seven today. This is, kind of the first time we ran it in a while. I'm going to, we're going to coach it on the fly and like, let's, let's get some reps at it. 
Um, and so it's it's very informal um, just to kind of maximize our, our time doing versus, you know, sitting in meetings. Yeah. I love that idea. Coach, you talked about um, – it, it kind of seemed through the, your schedule that – a week over the summer kind of matches up a day to the fall, right? The day one is going to be similar to week one. Am I correct in that? Uh, close. I, so I, I threw that together uh, just kind of as an example. Um, and so some of these, some of those things would, would, if it was our true kind of install, it would be moved around a little bit. Um, I, I, it's, kind of a little bit more that. condensed than it would be. We 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 are in a we are in a three day install operation. So those days would be spaced out a little bit more. So kind of what you see here is way kind of way more uh at least on the days than than you we would see in practice. In the weeks, it it's probably close ish over the course of a week. With the idea though like we're not installing everything on Monday and we're running it all week. You know, like a little bit will get done on Monday, a little bit get done on Tuesday. A little bit will get done on Wednesday. A little bit will get done on Friday. And so even though it's that's kind of the week one install, it's not week one, day one. We're running it all week. It is over the course of the week, these things will get hit. These things will get installed. Um, but the week should kind of marry up close to the day. But for the intents of the spreadsheet, it is, uh, it's much more consolidated than, um, than it would be if, if it were. Yeah, that actual. answers my question. I was going to – I just wanted something nice and fancy for the board drill <laughs> podcast. Yeah. I was just curious <laughs> if you're going and refreshing them on a daily basis throughout the whole week, or if you're just kind of putting in bits and pieces as you go, that makes more sense. Yeah. It would be like that, you know, it'd be like, Hey, you know, today we're in, we're in 12 personnel. We're only working these two formations, you know, and we're only working these couple pass concepts. All right. Now in this day we're in, 12 personnel were in another formation and we're working, you know, maybe it's the same past concepts. Maybe it's, it's two different other yeah. concepts. Right. And so then that way, by, by the end of the week, you've kind of hit on everything, you know, on your list. Um, now, now at Oak Leaf, when we were a lot of one word tempo, it would be, Hey, everything's kind of installed that Monday. And then this is all we're doing all week. Cause it's only a handful of things. And by, by Thursday, we better be snapping the ball as soon as it's put back down because <laughs> we've done it enough times. That's the tempo we play at. You know, there's only one or two words that have to get said. Um, and so it would get installed up front, but it's because there was so much less. And when you're playing, when you're trying to do that, playing that fast, like it's more, the operation of playing fast is you can make the argument more important, you know, than the, the execution of mm -hmm. some of the plays. Absolutely. Coach. Yeah. Must be nice too as you're talking there, coach. I heard we'll be in twelve personnel running this formation, twelve personnel running that formation. Must be nice to have that many tight ends, huh? We uh we have two really, really Very good in, incredible <laughs> Yeah, really good, really good tight ends. They're they're we we have, yeah, we have we have a lot of really good players. We have we have just a lot of really good kids. Like every day yeah. every day it's just a ton of fun. You know, um our our group's just really fun to be around. Yeah, absolutely. It's something, again, we talk about a lot. We have a lot of conversations about that. Um, but it's, it's you know, it's very interesting how you're able to get into a lot of different formations based off personnel without changing personnel and things like that. It seems yeah. like nightmare fuel for the defenses. We'll leave that for another night. Uh, Matt, any other questions you have kind of on this install? I know this is going to be a little no, bit shorter. The only episode, other thing but... rolling around in my head is, uh, you know, it, it kind of changes when you're a head coach as well, too. You know, when I was a head coach, I had to, even though I was coaching offense as a head coach, I'd tell my offensive coordinator, hey, day one, for the defense's sake, we're only doing two by two. Day two, we're only going to be three by one, you know, and we'd kind of pace it. I'd make sure my <laughs> offense paced it so that we weren't getting too far ahead of ourselves and, and forcing the defense to put in too much in one day and making sure everybody's in the right place. I, I think another big thing is um, co coaches go past – um, you know, the importance of being able to adjust to formations and make sure every kid's getting a rep, you know, they don't just see where to line up that they're actually lined up on the field. 
And uh, Kyle, you may remember we did that formation period every single day um, where the kids are just line, just yeah. line up as quick as you can. Boom, offense is calling a new formation. Defense recognizes it and lines up. And I felt like that was huge for us just to get that installation and in properly that every day we came out and worked on those formations first. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, Matt, I actually moved that to pre-practice defensively because I liked it so much that Avery knows this, but we would do it every day in the corner of the end zone. Like every kid gets out there. Like, I don't care if you have your pads on or not. Let's go. We're, you know, 11 personnel tight end. Like, how do we line up? All right. They motion this guy. How do we line up? So and I think it's a good that's something. I was going to say, that's something that we, we kind of got uh, this off season too. Um, that I kind of like the idea of having, making sure everybody knows how to line up in every formation, but then, you know, especially, um, when, when you're like big mm -hmm. motion days, right? Like, Hey, we're going to line up and it might seem like nothing. And, and I think as, as coaches, it's easy for us to say like, well, look, you're just going across the formation. Like, I don't understand why this is complicated to you, but it's not just that one kid going over there. Yeah. Those other receivers got to realize, you know, we use the term like uh, you're either adopting or you're losing. Like if you're, if we're in a three by one formation and we're motioning a two by two, the single's got to know, Hey, like you're not, you're adopting a buddy. And is he going to become number two or is he becoming number one? That's going to change what you have to do. Then the three receiver side, they got to know, first of all, which three of them is going. And then the other two got to <laughs> know like, all right, well now who's one now who's two. Okay. How does this change what we do? Um, you know, and then, if you're a, a stickler on how the motion looks, like you got to let every, every kid's got to look at the motion. And so I think, uh, you know, we, we got kind of some clinic film of a, a college team where like they, they're big into that or, Hey, look, we're going to line up and we're going to take a step off. Once the ball snapped, you can take one step. It doesn't matter, but we want the operation of lining up in a formation and motioning. And so everybody can see like, Hey, we're going from two by two to three by one. Yeah. It doesn't sound complicated to us, but it is all of a sudden for a kid who spent, you know, the previous 10 seconds thinking he was the number two receiver. And then all of a sudden he's like, Whoa, I'm number three. I gotta, I gotta figure this out pretty quickly. Um, you know, and, and walking through all that. I, I think that's something good. I think that's something that we might look at, you know, adding as, as kind of a pre-practice deal for us. Yeah, no, I think that's, I I'm a big proponent of the pre-practice formation periods. I think they're as good as any other EDD or whatever people do. Um, you know, my kid running through a ladder or doing whatever, like hell, I'd rather him get mentally there uh instead of doing that same single drill every single day. That that may or may not help him. Let's be real. We all know EDDs, some of them are very good and some of them are trash. So uh, just being fair here with it. But no, I think that's a good point. Matt, I you know, I want to go back to what you were talking about, the install and talking about pacing it with the defense, uh, just to address it. Um, a the defense can never stall enough early enough ever so I don't know where that comment came from I, I feel like we should be blitzing on day one corner blitz let's go so um, just wanted to touch on that a little bit because it's fun Matt and I knew that I used to drive you nuts by doing that yeah I mean, one, I mean so. to me the, the goal of it was to make sure every single kid knew where to align <laughs> on and any two by two sets we were going to do because you're going to treat three by one I mean right Kyle you're going to treat three by one differently I mean, you always said, hey, there's only yep. so many things yep. an offense can do. They can have a tight end or not, and they can be three by one or not, right? So, you know, you want to make sure yep. that they see all those two by two sets and know how to adjust to it properly. And then you throw the three by one and it, it's going to change how they react and they adjust. Um, and just as coach said, then you add in your motions, <laughs> you know, and you give the exotics and other things yep. like that. Hey, let's put a kid in a situation in a pre-practice where they got to move and adjust maybe to something they haven't seen, you know. And uh, I, I think that can be built into the game plans once you get into the season. Hey, a team's going to see a specific motion. Hey, we got to show that. You know, we got to show that in pre-practice and make sure the yeah. defense can line up and adjust and be in the proper spot and is comfortable with it. You know, and, and it also gives those coaches, those coaches on the defensive side, a, an opportunity to talk to their players through it. You know. Yeah. Now it's funny That's enough. Um, sorry, go ahead, Aaron. I was going to say my, my fall camp scripting is like the, the, my least favorite thing to do, you know, cause you're not necessarily, you don't, you're, you're trying, you don't want to script and try to dial up your defense, right? That's, that's not good. Uh, but you also got to be conscious about making sure like, Hey, I'm not putting us in situations where, you know, we're, we're in trouble, 
but also like I don't necessarily know what we're gonna get this play. How you know, and and neither do they. And so fall camp scripting is is my least favorite thing to do because it's it's you know you're you're you know it's it's tough no matter what you do. You you try to yeah. dial up your defense. You try to dial up your defense and it works. Now all of a sudden, like you're you're beating up those defensive kids where that's kind of not really fair. You try to dive your defense and it doesn't work. Now all of a sudden you're like, oh man, we're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, you know, you just you just call random ball plays and then you're you're getting eaten up all the time. It it gets tough. And so ball camp scripting is is something that is, you know, just that, dial them up, coach. Uh, dial up the defense. Good. Let them know why they're bad and where they're bad and make sure they know going into the season, right? Uh, that was always my philosophy. I want to I want to show yeah. how we want to expose all the all the bad spots, right? Make sure we can fix that. I'd say dial it up. Let them go. I don't ever remember that happening. That's a little weird. Must I guess it your memory after I left. Um <laughs> yeah. I, I remember I remember our good buddy Lampy getting a little pissed at me early in, in fall camp and those were you my favorite days with me and him screaming it. at each other. Yeah. It's good just times. Get after it. we were more intense than the kids. <laughs> me and Avery have gotten into a few times too. It's pretty fun. Him screaming at me back. Yeah, we there. Got into little <laughs> well, you're you're running hurry up and you guys throw a post, you leave the ball in the post, and then you reset a different ball and you're already running another play. And I'm like, guys, at least pick up the ball in the yeah, post. Kyle. No, we just won't. We won't go somewhere else next play. Coach, if you leave the ball in the post, the defensive coaches may slip on it. You know, <laughs> yeah, they got they nowhere, nowhere to stand. To stand. Yeah. What do you, do? you know, I hear that joke all the time, and I, 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 I get it. Trust me, like, oh, there's six guys in the post, but then I turn around and they're running hurry up plus subbing guys, and there's 22 guys behind it. We have no idea. And then he would have teacher, he would have receivers teach other receivers. I'm like, guys, you got nine receivers lined up. We can't even get lined up because you're stamping the ball so fast. There's trips over here. There's trips over there. And there's two running backs in the backfield. Like, what do we do, Aaron? And he's like, well, they're helping them out. They're telling them what play to run. You know, they're younger guys. And I'm like, what? we don't that know how to call it straight. Well, so, the best it's... is when we'd run those guys vertical. And so the outside yeah. guys would take off vertical. And then they were taught, like, if you run a go route, you come off. So they would yeah. run deep downfield. They'd run off to the sideline, and the next guys would already be at the line of scrimmage. They would just walk and step on. And so the it's corners just... would have to run all the way back and get lined back up. And so then I would try to start subbing quicker, and then we'd get caught messing around. So, you know, it's just fun times. But, you know, yeah. Matt, back to what you were saying, um, and I know, Aaron, you've talked on this too, is putting kids early in those situations during installs to critically think. We know that's the hardest thing about teaching young kids is just critical thinking and application of, like, Sometimes things aren't exactly the way we teach it or taught it in a game. They aren't exactly the, that way in practice. And it's like, you have to critically think through, just like you said, coach Avery, look, if I'm the number two, and for some reason, I don't know if you'd ever do this, but you motion the number one behind me, I guess you can do it, but you know, like, Hey, I'm the number one now. And this has moved and all that stuff of just teaching that application with kids. Cause it's going to happen in a game. No matter how much I tell them, this is how you play this technique in quarters or in ripples or anything like that. Something weird's going to happen, right? you know, the wide receiver is going to fall down or they're going to cross and do something weird. And so uh, a player's got to critically think, and we're always teaching that. And that's probably the hardest thing in the world to teach a young kid, 16, 18, is like how to critically think through a problem. It's it's damn near impossible. And I think that's that's really kind of the key of it when when you script, right, is like if you can early on just get them to process, you know, rules, right, and how those rules might change. Um, then it's a lot easier when, hey, on, you know, game week, guys, yeah, I, we've taught, you know, this concept out of a million different motions and whatever, but like, we're only running it three ways this week, you know? Yeah. And so you don't have to worry about, hey, I might motion and become number two. I might motion and become number one. I might motion out. I might, you know, early motion on the backfield. You don't have to necessarily keep all that stuff in the forefront because, you know, in a game week, you're consolidating those calls. And so I think like that's kind of the key in fall camp is, hey, if I can just make sure you understand the rules, you know, look, stick, any version of three by one, right? Stick is stick. If you know the rules, it doesn't matter if we're three by one attached or three by one detached. But if you yeah. don't know the rules of it, then <laughs> we're in a little bit of trouble, you know? And so I think that's kind of the big thing early is, hey, understanding the rules of who has what not 
you know, well, what do I have on this particular play? Because uh, yeah. that's where now all of a sudden, if you worry about what you have on that particular play, all it takes is one motion for you to be in a lot of trouble. Um, yeah. But if you know that, hey, look, the place that outside guy has this, well, then, you know, it's a little bit easier to figure out. Um, and so I think kind of, but then again, that goes into coaches or teachers, right? Like, how are you, how are you teaching these things? Are you teaching it in a way where the rules can make sense and they can process them quickly? Or are you teaching it in a way where you're just throwing information at them and hoping for the best? And then, yeah. you know, I don't understand why they don't get it. Uh, and that's kind of our <laughs> job as coaches. And, and so for us, it's finding a way like, look, I got to, you know, keep finding better ways to teach things. Right. And so, you know, every, every off season, right. Like what's, is there a better way to teach this? You know, and then you go to a clinic, you hear something say some, you know, here's somebody say something all of a sudden like, Whoa, that's a way better way to teach it than I was doing. Like, let's do that. Yeah. You know? And so again, that's, they're some of the best teachers out there are coaches, right? Cause if in math class, if you don't teach it right, Johnny, Johnny gets a bad grade, you know, maybe you get a bad email. You don't teach it right on Monday through Thursday, you lose Friday night and then you got a lot of angry people. Yeah. Then you get a different kind of email. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe one about your job over the next eight months or whatever that is. So it's uh it's always an adventure. Well, perfect coach. I do appreciate you coming on. I, like I said, I've always thought that your install was you know, again, I wouldn't call it revolutionary, but it is different than how a lot of people do it. And I think it's something that uh, is worthy for coaches to hear. So thought it'd be a good point to to come on and talk about that. Um, again, if you'd like to reach out, uh, Coach is on Twitter. Is it Coach Aaron Avery on Twitter? Yep. So he's at on Twitter at Coach Aaron Avery. Um, if you'd like us to reach out to him or you'd like me to text him for you, just reach out to us at the Boardrill Podcast at gmail.com or at Boardrill Pod on Twitter or TikTok. Matt, any no, other party sorry, I was here? late, guys, but uh, I liked it. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> flying ants. Uh, you never know what you get in Florida. You know, you can walk in and could have a four-inch cockroach <laughs> yeah. running around the, the palmetto bug, as we call them, or you know, flying ants, or you know, alligator. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotta love it. All right, for the Board Drill Podcast and Coach Avery, we're signing off. Coach Avery, thanks for joining us tonight. Have a great night. Absolutely. Oh, wow.